No worries, I'll just do my little spiel. So just so people know, the meeting is being recorded and people can find access to this recording on the Amherst, Town of Amherst YouTube site and you can watch the, the recording of tonight's meeting. And I'm taking minutes. Who's taking Sorry, minutes? That's so, oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Whew. Yeah. Um, okay. Has, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from last time in advance? If so, I think we can just move forward with approving them. I'll make the motion with this up. I second. Oh, good. You second it, Andrew. Okay, you'll need to do a voice vote. So, Allison? Yes. Roof? Yes. Raghavan? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Rose? Yes. And Breaker? Yes. And just so you know, Jesse will not be with you tonight. His children are on school vacation week, so they're away. I hope they're somewhere fun. <laughs> yes. um, okay, so we've done that. So next up is public comment. Um, so before we go into public comment, I just wanted to make one note. I. I got forwarded um, some information that was a little bit um, incorrect about what this group is talking about today. So it, there was a, a email that went through the Smart Solar listserv saying that ECAC was gonna be discussing the solar moratorium today. So I just mm -hmm. wanna clarify that ECAC will not be discussing the solar moratorium. We do not have, um, we don't really have anything to say on that and it's not in our jurisdiction jurisdiction um the council is voting on that on the 28th so i would welcome anyone who has thoughts on that to reach out to the council um so i'm going to request that or politely request that if you have a public comment related to the moratorium um this is probably not the best place to make it um we will be talking there is a solar update on our agenda. That's really for Stephanie to update ECAP on what's been happening at the from her, from her vantage point on sort of moving forward with the solar study and uh, solar bylaw. Um, so you're welcome to make a comment on that, or if you want to wait till the end to comment on that after we have that discussion or any of our other discussions, that is also welcome. We usually do a another public comment at the end of our meeting. Um, so with that, we will open it up for public comment. Um, depending on how many hands are raised, we'll see how much time folks can get, but um, usually it's, it's three minutes. All right, I'm not seeing any hands. I'll give it one more second. Okay, great. Um, so otherwise, you know, we, again, we do typically do another public comment at the end of the, of the meeting. Oh, we have so, one. Oh, yeah. We do have one. Laura McLeod. Oh, okay. Laura, I'm, um, you're, uh, Laura McLeod, you're able to speak now. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, we can't really hear you though, Laura. I can't see you, but I cannot see my uh, my screen there. I don't know. Let's see. We can hear you now. Yeah. Hey, hi. Hello, Laura. Hello. I see Andra, Steve, yeah, Stephanie. But I cannot, I don't know where is my uh, my screen. I, it was, wait a minute. I don't know. 
maybe my husband was with this looking and he disconnected. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I'm here and I'm, I'm glad that <laughs> you're here too. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Great. Um, you're welcome to make a point or if you just want to listen in, um, that's always welcome. I don't, I don't know how to put my camera. I don't know where is my camera here. I don't know. But thank you for doing this. It's extremely important. And, uh, you know, at the Sierra, they are um, working on a project to, to uh, sort of consolidate this position to have solar on roofs and all the other, not, not on trees, not cutting down forests. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Laura. Um, okay, so let's move on to staff updates. Uh, they'll be fairly quick today. So the first um, piece of rather exciting news is that we have two new ECAC members. I don't believe they've been sworn in yet, and they are both actually here as attendees. Uh, Lori Goldner and Stella D will be joining you in the near future. Um, so I could, um, I think I'll maybe Lori and Stella at the next meeting, if you're not already sworn in, we'll at least give you an opportunity, maybe put you on the agenda so that you can introduce yourselves to the committee and give them some background on, um, on your interest in the ECAC and your background, background that's relevant to their work. Um, Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, next, I wanted to let you know that the Green Communities grant round has been announced. Um, so there are two rounds. You can only apply for one. It used to be just once a year, but now it's twice in the fall and the, the spring and the fall. Uh, we're not likely to apply in the spring, but we are probably, if we are going to apply for grant funding, it'll be in the fall. Um, uh, one thing that's different that I noticed this year is that they have a... Um, it's, it's up to $200,000 for this grant round of funding, but they do have a $500,000 allocation for uh, building decarbonization. If you apply for that and get it, it's highly, highly competitive. Um, if you do get it, you cannot apply for another green community grant for two years. So um, I don't know if people are aware, but there is kind of a, a, a cap on green communities funding where once you reach $750,000 of funding, then the award that you can be given after that in subsequent years is 100,000. So, and that's like, a, it's a cap. So um, I will be certainly looking into the decarbonization possibility, but you know, um, because if we can leverage that with some other funds, we might actually get something really done. But I want to make sure that we're if we are going that route, that it's something that we can really achieve um, and that it's gonna make a significant impact. So I can think of a few places that might be good candidates for that opportunity. Um, like the Munson Library might be a good candidate for that right now, but I'll have to talk with the um, facilities manager and we're gonna to have to sort of put our heads together about what makes the most sense. And then we'll bring that back to you all run it by you, see what you think. So uh, there's that. And then I had a meeting today with our partner for the Mass CEC Empower Grant. That is the grant we received to do outreach regarding um, a building disclosure on energy efficiency of apartment buildings. So I met with the folks at um, Family Outreach, who are our partners in that effort. We had a really exciting conversation. They've already got some community members lined up to do, to be the building captains, which was just great. So I'm really excited. We haven't signed the contract yet because the state hasn't sent it to us yet. So unfortunately, it's, um, I feel like we're going to be at least a full month behind of our timeline. But, um, but we're, you know, we're planning ahead and, uh, We've got a meeting next week, so I feel like once we get that contract signed, we'll be ready to hit the ground running. So that's pretty a pretty exciting opportunity. Um, 
Let's see. And then I forwarded you all some information from EOEA uh, and do EOER. One was about the clean, um, clean heat initiative from EOEA. Uh, they're having an informational meeting about that. And I think that's uh, March 1st is one of the first meetings, but there's a series of meetings that they're holding. So you can look at the links uh, that I sent you. And then there's another stretch code update meeting. And I think that's um, March 2nd. I think there's also some initial um, additional meeting times and dates for that as well. So you just wanna dig into those a little more. Um, so that's it. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet tonight. So that's it. <laughs> Yeah, Andra. Um, is, so I uh, wanted to get an update on the, um, uh, let's see, the, the letter about the future of gas process that we submitted. Yeah, it's been sent to the um, town manager and the town council. So I don't know if it's been, I haven't sent it out on their behalf, but I was needing the town manager to give me the go ahead. So there has been a request to do so. Okay, it's going to hit a de deadline. It, I'm aware. <laughs> the deadline I, was March 1st. Um, yep. They may have extended it, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll follow up tomorrow. I, I did send it. Um, the town council, I think, was okay with, with um, you all. Because you, if you recall they were going to do a letter and you were going to do a letter and they were going to somehow try to combine the two. Um, there was one response, I think, from one town council member. So I forwarded it asking if, um, there, if it was okay to merge that information in with our letter and I didn't hear a response yet. So I will follow up tomorrow. There was only one council member, I think, who actually commented. Um. Okay, and if um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll find out what the actual deadline is. Sure. Um, but um, I I also wrote in the email accompanying it that um, it could would be a good idea for um, the town to also send the letter directly to Berkshire Gas because mm -hmm. um, the the submission uh, on the website portal goes to the consultants and probably not the same people um, who would read it if we addressed it directly to the um, CEO of Berkshire yep. Gas. I definitely um, noted that. I saw that. And so um, I'm just waiting <laughs> for the blessing to send it off. Um, but I think... Uh, I think it's just a matter of a heavy agenda. Um, I'll I'll follow up tomorrow. Thank you. Um, and also the um, building electrification. People all over the state are um, asking for municipal officials to sign a letter about um, the stretch code. I believe. Is that yep. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have an update for that yet. Yeah. But I, I, I got that request as well. So yeah. I'll, um, I'll work on that, but I haven't done any outreach on that yet. That's why I didn't have it as part of my update. Okay. Any other questions for Stephanie? Great. Um, um, Stephanie, it'd be interesting when the community outreach, the, the grant around the building efficiencies gets like running, it'd be interesting to think about how we communicate that out because um, it's a cool project. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, ECAC member updates. Um, I don't know if people um, know what the stretch code is or um, how that might affect 
Amherst, and if that's something um, that you'd like me to report on as information. Sure. Um, so last year, um, a significant climate bill was passed and um, the governor vetoed it twice over the stretch code. The state establishes the building code and there's a base code. And then if you're a green community, you have to opt up to the stretch code. That's one of the requirements of being a green community. Um, and the stretch code has, like the base code, has languished. Um, it's not much of a stretch. And um, the bill last year um, uh, re required a significant update with uh, the idea that there was going to be a net zero opt-in stretch code so that municipalities who chose to could adopt a building code that would require all um, development in the town to be net zero. Um, and the administration missed the deadline um, in the fall and finally has come out with a straw proposal, they call it, which um, gives several possible scenarios for how uh, um, augmented stretch code, they have some word for it, they, they dropped net zero, <laughs> um, uh, could, could look, but all of them allow for fossil fuels. There is no net zero. So it's very inadequate. Everyone who's been working on building electrification um, is sort of outraged. So that's that's what the letter that our, our own participation as an Amherst team in the building electrification accelerator um, group uh, was about that I asked Stephanie about just now. Just, just a question of clarification, Andre. If you, if you know, or Stephanie, uh, just because I'm, I'm curious. I've, I've heard about the stretch code, but, um, uh, but you mentioned, you mentioned that there's a augmented or whatever stretch code. So, are there, are there? Obviously, there's the base code, uh, which is law in Massachusetts, and then green communities need to adopt the stretch code. But are you saying there's two stretch codes, a stretch code, and a even further uh, augmented stretch code? Uh, and green communities would, uh, by default, opt, need to opt into the updated stretch code, but not necessarily the, the uh, augmented stretch code? That's correct. Okay. It would save municipalities from having to go to the legislature for a home rule petition in order to do it one by one um, to require fossil fuel free building. Um, which you know is is the other municipal opt up method right now. Better would be to have you know a law that just all new buildings have to be fossil fuel free, which I mentioned at the last meeting. Um, the, a bill has just been introduced, and Mothers Out Front and many other organizations are working on that. Great. Any other updates or questions for Andra? Um, I have one thing. I got an email from Anna Devlin Gadier, who's the District Five um, counselor, about. Um, I'll just read it here. As part of the Joint Capital Planning Committee process, they're examining the current inventory in town in order, in order to prioritize capital projects and spendings, which includes buildings, vehicles, et cetera. And so she was um, wanting to see if there was anything, the criteria for the inventory, whether there was anything missing that would help us from the lens of reducing emissions. So I think what makes the most sense is that maybe I and Stephanie can meet with her um, to go through that and then bring back anything of relevance to um, 
to the committee in regards to what additional criteria. I know we've talked about this in the past, so it may be that they've already captured some of it, but um, I haven't looked at it in detail yet. Have they been um, directed to the relevant parts of the CARP? Do you know? Have um, the Joint Planning, Joint Capital Planning Committee been directed to the parts of the CARP? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I know the counselors have themselves been directed and these are all counselors, but I don't know if like as part of their committee, they have reviewed it. Did you have a specific suggestion? I didn't. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I'm assuming that they are asking this because of the CARP, because <laughs> we talk about this in the CARP, so. Laura, Anna has her hand up, just I didn't know if you could see that. Oh, yeah. Um, Anna, since we're talking about you, maybe you can speak quickly. Oh, we'll allow her to talk. Anna, you can go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to speak or not. So I can give a little bit of insight into where this is coming from. Uh, so JCPC, uh, Joint Capital Planning Committee, gets an inventory of all the town-owned vehicles, as well as uh, an inventory about our municipal buildings. And so where this is coming from, Andra, is from the CARP. So in reading it, I noticed the, uh, and I don't have it in front of me, I apologize, the five-year vehicle uh, something, five-year vehicle something, and um, <laughs> a couple other components that it felt like in general, it would be helpful for us to be considering sustainability as we look at our municipal buildings and as we look at our vehicle inventories. And so I know Stephanie does, I believe Stephanie already does some sort of inventory, but I'd love to combine or actually just ensure that we're looking at this inventory through that lens as well as through just a finance lens. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, and I think Laura, I sent you, and if not, I will, what we currently get in that inventory. Um, and so just looking to see what might be beneficial to us for us to add and how we might consider those future additions. And then uh, the other only quick thing, JCPC is not just made up of counselors. It is uh, also a member of the library, uh, library trustees school committee, two members of the library trustees school committee and council. Okay, good to know. Yep. Um, and Anna, do you have a timeline on this? Like when, when are you guys finalizing this? Realistically, we won't get this in for this year because we've already received the inventory, um, but I'd love to pitch it for next year. So what the process would look like from what I've been told from Sean uh, Mangano is that I would write a memo to the finance committee because they are the ones who decide what's actually in the inventory. And I'm more than happy to do that. So um, if you all tell me what should be in it, I will, I will uh, forward that on and write the memo to the finance committee who hopefully will then adopt it into the inventory uh, questions or asks for next year which would okay. be about this time, yeah. That, that's helpful. So we have a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we can do then is actually share the list with everybody in ECAC and get folks, anybody who wants to provide some input to provide that. And then um, we can either have you come back to a future meeting and talk through it or just send you kind of our thoughts. Sure thing, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for being here to clarify and correct me because I said multiple things that were not correct. <laughs> um, oh, hi. And now I have a little person here. Um, okay, next up on the agenda. Actually, I have one more announcement. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, the um, local energy advocates, um, is a organization that started with a small group of residents who um, kind of got the whole ball rolling with the intermunicipal electricity aggregation. And um, at our next meeting on March 15th, we're hosting 
um, two speakers about the Ithaca um, plan to decarbonize all of their buildings. Um, and they are doing it in a public private partnership, um, raising private money for it. And we'll have the um, director of the transformation process um, and the uh, um, a representative from Block Power, which is the company that is going to be overseeing the project on March 15th at seven o'clock, it will be um, publicizing the, this event. It's, it's pretty exciting work that they're doing. And I think we can learn a lot from them. Okay, great. And so Andre, you'll send us the flyer or, or something? Okay. And what was the group you said is doing this? We've, it's the Local Energy Advocates of Western Mass. And it was the Western Massachusetts CCA group. We, we changed the name and made it more formal. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, anybody else? Okay, um, so next up is solar updates. So I'll turn back to you, Stephanie. Sure, so um, after the last meeting, I revised the proposal that was submitted to the town manager. There were also some additional comments from the planning director. Um, that revised proposal is posted in your meeting packet on the town's website on your ECAC page. If members of the public are looking to see that, um, it's posted there. Uh, but the changes that we made in terms of the committee membership increased the, the suggestion that there are at least two or more ECAC representatives and also two or more members of the planning board. We removed the recommendation for a solar industry representative and included a member of the Board of Health. Um, and then we also uh, did identify a non-industry solar expert, uh, such as someone coming from UMass Energy Transition, which was a suggestion, but not necessarily from specifically from UMass Energy Transition Institute, just an example of who that person might be or where they might come from. So this proposal was submitted to the town manager. Ultimately, it's up to the town manager um, who he ends up appointing and whether he um, you know, will adhere to these recommendations or have some of his own. So um, it's what staff recommended, but it could change. So uh, I know that it's under review currently and that's it's been submitted, it's under review. And um, I think that's, it. I know that there were some members of the public who submitted recommendations both to the town manager and copied me or submitted them to me, but anything I received I did forward to the town manager's office. So there were a few members of the public that made specific requests uh, and they were forwarded on to Paul Bockelman. <clears throat> Great, thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate, I can tell that a lot of our feedback that we gave you last time was incorporated. So really appreciate that. Um, yeah, Dwayne. Yep, uh, just also wanted to uh, express appreciation to Stephanie um, on, on um, the revisions to this and, and, and uh, uh, putting it forward. Uh, I definitely uh, appreciate and, and uh, um, am uh, appro very approving of having at least two members of ECAC uh, on this committee, because I think uh, it, it, it's worthy of, of uh, at least two of us, and be great to uh, to, to, to um, for more than one of us to to um, represent ECAC and, and have feedback and uh, uh, on that committee. Um, there was one thing that I read in here that was a little bit new to me, and it sounds like it may be too late to revise anything, but I just want to get your um, 
feedback on Stephanie, or at least my clarific, my understanding of what the resource assessment will be, uh, because um, it indicated in actually a couple of spots that the the deliverable uh, that's being expected is a um, you know a mapping. I think it says here include a map showing sites in town that are considered to be suitable for installation of large scale ground mounted solar arrays, uh, which I think is great and critical and important. But I was expecting and hoping uh, and thinking in, that it would be very important for this uh, resource assessment to also be very clear and also uh, on uh, all the other siting uh, opportunities for solar in Amherst, um, including rooftops, parking lot canopies, and small small scale project ground mounted projects, uh, because I think we need very much need that information as well. Um, in order to um, help with the zoning process, uh, as well as with the planning process in terms of where um, a suitable amount of solar might be able to fit um, appropriately um, and distributed in, in various different ways across Amherst. So can you clarify a little bit in terms of the expectation on the scope of work for the resource assessment on, in, 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 that, in that area? I think the concern was that some of the smaller scale was somewhat already addressed in the existing bylaw to a degree, um, not specifically to solar, but certainly for siting energy, renewable energy, um, and I think in utilities. And I think um, the concern was that it was the really the larger scale that was not addressed. So some of this was, this wasn't all my, <laughs> um, this wasn't all just me. The planning director had some input into this as well. So I'm, I am very fully cognizant and aware of what we as an ECAC are looking for. And um, I think there's also the concern about um, the amount of uh, available funding. We have $75,000 for this effort. And if you recall, when I got the original quote from the consultant, it was a minimum of 80 for a six month study. Um, up to, you know, 100,000 or more for a more comprehensive study. So I think, I think it's one of those things where we might have to look at this a little more and see what's um, possible. I'm certainly advocating for a more full scale assessment. I mean, that's what I knew I understood we wanted as an ECAC. Um, but again, I think the concern was that that was the, that was the big hole. I, I guess I would suggest it's really critical. Uh, I mean, as part of the community conversation about where and how to site solar and how much and so forth. If we, if we, you know, if, if the resource assessment sets out, you know, lar areas where large large arrays might be suitable, and the and the community is is you know pushing back on that, saying let's do it on parking lots instead. We don't have the information to suggest well. Parking, we, you know, we've looked at parking lots and parking lots will get us X number of megawatts or kilowatts. Uh, uh, and, and we're all, you know, and that's very suitable and, and appropriate, uh, but it's, it, it will or won't, uh, you know, come close to our, our needs. Uh, and if we don't have that information uh, and, and extending that to roof, roof, uh, rooftops generally, um, and I know these resource assessments, they don't necessarily go rooftop to rooftop to rooftop, particularly residential, they will for the larger ones, but that's in Amherst, there's not that many of them and there's not that many parking lots. I don't see how it could be that, would be that costly for um, a, a consultant to look at the parking lots and the, and the larger rooftops, um, uh, which there's not too many. Uh, the, the, the residential ones, they do more by uh, sort of algorithms of, of suggesting, you know, uh, that you know, X percentage of, of solar in uh, roofs in general are, are appropriate. You know that type of analysis, but still to, to get some some sense from an outside expert on on what the uh, capacity opportunities are for these other types of solar, I think is a really uh, critical part of the equation that we need to uh, pull together. I I completely agree with you a hundred percent, and I think. Um, this is a proposal. 
it doesn't mean that this is what's going to necessarily be specifically in the RFP. And I understand that, yes, it's important that that should be in there, but I, I think, you know, I'll certainly be advocating for, for a more comprehensive look. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. You're welcome. I have a question. Um, are the committees that are going to be represented, are they going to be nominating members or how is Paul going to pick, pick names? I, I think he, <clears throat> you know, it's really up to him. And my guess is he may ask the committees to appoint one or two people. He mm -hmm. may say, you know, he might reach out to Laura and say, we're putting together this committee and would you please you know, identify a member of your committee to serve or two or three or whoever, um, he may reach out. Um, so I think, you know, obviously I don't think he's gonna just certainly wouldn't just appoint people if they're not interested. <laughs> so <laughs> my guess is that's probably what he'll do. And any idea on the timeline, how long he'll be thinking I about? I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've submitted this and I haven't really heard uh, anything yet. So, um, but I'll, I'll follow up because I feel like I'm, you know, we've got the funding and we're looking to do the assessment sooner than later. So mm -hmm. I'll definitely be following up because um, we, we want to come to that first meeting with a draft RFP, which, you know, I'll be reaching out to Dwayne about in terms of the prioritization. Good, thank you. Thank you for your work on this, Stephanie. Sure, you're welcome. Is there, um, I think the only other, does anybody else have any comments or questions? One sort of just like in the weed question <laughs> for me is whether or not there's like, if we would one person fit more than one of these buckets or are you trying to have like i think we're trying to have like, different like, people trying to have different people okay yeah i don't think we want one person filling more than one sort of identified role okay great um okay this is exciting so hope fingers crossed we can move forward quickly and I will add that the point of this assessment, as we've said before, and I just wanted to reiterate, um, because there have been some people asking for members that are not experts to be part of this committee, but this is supposed to be a very technical assessment. So it's supposed to be at that level and the opportunity for people to weigh in with various expertises when it goes before you, when it goes before the planning board, when it ultimately goes before the town council, you know, there'll be opportunities for people to have public comment and weigh in on the process and provide feedback. But in terms of doing this, this is really a very, you know, it's supposed to be a very non um, biased, a very unbiased approach. It should be done in a very technical way. That's what we're looking to get from this assessment. Great. Okay, so seeing no more hands, I'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is outreach and communications. Um, so we have three items here, outreach to counselors, Outreach on CPACE and mass government outreach, both of which I think are covered under um, the work that Vasu's been doing with his timeline. Um, so maybe we'll just start quickly to see if anybody has any updates to share ar around engagements with counselors that haven't already been discussed. Yeah, Don. Um, yeah, I've just reached out to um, Andy and to Mandy Joe, I haven't heard back from them yet, but I did reach out. And if I don't hear anything by the end of this week, I'll reach out again. So they have been contacted. Great. Yeah, Vasu? 
Yeah, I continue having uh, conversations with Shalini um, around the uh, timeline where I brought up, you know, having a festival in Amherst and, you know, she's been really interested and in been talking to me about it. Um, you know, Stephanie, I know you mentioned that it's a lot of work and Shalini's response was, well, could we get other people to support? She talked to uh, Alex from the Jones Library Committee and he's interested as well. And he, uh, Shalini also brought up potential partners for this and I'm gonna read this off our list. She brought up BID, Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce, Hitchcock Center, Tony and Nancy at UMass Outreach Office, Amherst College, Hampshire College and Amherst College, Tom Davies, uh, Director of uh, Sustainability Initiative. Uh, there's the state rep, Mindy Dome, uh, and then the Energy Transitions Institute. So she's still very keen on having some sort of a festival, whether it's a day long, week long, she, she thinks that we can make it happen in, in the fall. I, I know you've gone through this more than anybody else and you said it's more complex but she's willing to you know take the lead and and uh you know assign potential partners to help us with it and also wants to know whether whether we want to take a lead role or more of a supporting role or no role at all uh but at least have that conversation with uh with the few people that she listed yeah stephanie um so Vasu, I think what I um, had responded was that we actually do have a sustainability festival um, annually and we have it right around Earth Day. It's in April. Um, we just haven't had it the last couple of years because of COVID, but the last event was in 2019. What I was suggesting was that you build around that. And um, what I was saying is a week long festival is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I was saying that if you wanted to do things around it, you know, maybe if you really wanted to extend it, make it a two day, but a week long festival is a huge, huge undertaking. Like it's enormous. It takes me a year just to plan the one day that we do. Um, so that's what I was, that was what I was responding to. Um, but we do have a festival, it's in April. I would love to see more involvement and engagement. We're always looking for ways to change it up each year, I think I mentioned that one year, I think it was 2000, it was either, I think it was 17, where we actually had a climate march and UMass was involved in that. In fact, it was UMass professors that organized that piece. And there were about 300 people that marched from, um, from uh, Kendrick Park to, to the town common. Um, so we've, we've done things like that. And Amherst College was part of that event that year as well. They had something going on like in the center of the common. We gave them space for kind of uh, a multi-artistic um, multi musical exhibit. And it was, it was really a pretty cool year that, um, that year in particular. So, uh, you know, we, we are already, we par do partner with the bid when we do this event. We do partner with the chamber. Um, so those relationships are established. There is an event that happens. I would say, please build around that. And I would be happy to work with you and Shalini on uh, expanding it a bit more. We're not doing it this year again because of COVID, but I fully anticipate that next year we will get back to get back to it. And that would be year 11. This will be a, the 11th year, the 11th event. And that's in addition to we used to have a renewable energy fair that we did used to have in the fall, but after several extraordinarily rainy events and cold events, we moved it to the spring, which has still sometimes been rainy and even snowy, <laughs> <laughs> even when they're in April, because it's New England. But um, so, yeah, I, I would I would really advise you not to do an additional event. I would want to build around the one that we already do. Got it. Yeah. And, and thanks for sending the flyer to I, I sent it over to her as well. So let me take that discussion to Shalini and have that conversation. Sure. Thank you. Great. Any other updates from discussions with counselors or? Yeah, Twain. I, I just um, mentioned I did have the opportunity to talk to a counselor who's not my counselor, but uh, um, uh, Pam, uh, Pam Rooney. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody else has covered her, but she came to me through uh, the Energy Transition Institute. She had engaged with them 
uh, on, on uh, questions about solar and bylaws and so forth. And, and it got pushed to me. So I had a chance to uh, have some interactions with her, which was helpful. And it pointed her to some resources on our website. Uh, but just thought I'd, I'd mention that. Great. Yeah, Andra. Um, yes, and I met with the um, District 3 counselors and um, they asked a lot of really good questions. And um, I think that there's um, going to need to be some thought and maybe on our part of, uh, you know, the kinds of things that um, the council can and should do um, and, and you know, help <laughs> sort of help them clarify uh, what's their role and, and what um, is just in the town manager's hands um, and, and staff. Um, so I think that should be a part of our discussions as we're, you know, coming up with thoughts uh, and saying, you know, oh, well, yes, let's bring that to our counselor that we're liaison to. Um, we should always keep in mind, um, well, what, what role do they actually play? And could they, you know, what's the value added <laughs> and, and the appropriate role for them to play in um, initiatives? Um, so. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we've talked about that several times. And I don't think we've ever actually pulled together like the list of policies that we think the counselors could be pushing. Um, so maybe that's an action item for us to do. Um, I don't know if folks have an idea on the best way to do that. Should one person just try to pull a list together and share it? Um, should we split up sections of the CARP? I don't know if Vasu when you when you and Darcy were doing um, your your review and and the matrix development. I don't know if you um, remember seeing like things that were specifically policy focused. We're actually very few related to policy. Okay. Yeah, so it was more around governance, and I think it was around hiring people, consultants, um, and then it was outreach. Um, okay, that's good to know. I mean, so I think we have this this inventory idea that on a on a raise, which is great. Um, that's that's certainly one place that we can utilize the council. Um, they, I think we'll be getting a liaison. So I think that will also help. I don't know, Stephanie, do you have any updates on that? No, okay. Um, so maybe that's something that we can, that's a conversation we can start with them. Um, I, uh, I also know we've talked about like the policy piece. So how, or the budget piece, excuse me, how do we, get ECAC involved, similar to the inventory discussion where it's like, how, how do we make sure the right lens is being applied to the inventory? I think we want to also be able to have that same discussion with the budgeting process. Um, and so I think that's another question. I don't know who's the right person to raise that question with. Do you know, Stephanie, would it be like the finance committee? Yeah, so, um... I sent an email a while ago um, regarding process because there was outreach to counselors and there was some discussion and confusion around that. And I think, um, and I'm sorry, I just don't remember off the top of my head, but I think the response had to do with that the budget requests from a committee, that's a town manager appointed a committee need to go through the town manager so the initial pathway is that you want to speak to the town manager or provide that information or feedback to the town manager to get to the town council. 
and I know it seems like a sort of roundabout way, but that's why I was suggesting your conversations one-on-one -on -one with counselors as a good way to raise information. Um, but officially, you should be going through the town manager. But if you've worked with your counselors, established a relationship, and can give them a heads up, you know, I mean, I think that was the point of having these conversations is just establishing a relationship so that you can give them a heads up about initiatives and background yeah. information before it comes to them. Okay, great. So it sounds like we, we need to, and Anna just actually just sent me a note that we should know about liaisons after the meeting on the 28th. So that's actually next week. So um, maybe this is a good, maybe this is a good agenda item to put on our next meeting, assuming that we'll have a liaison and they can attend. We can maybe talk a bit about um, about this and then Stephanie, maybe we can send a note to, to Paul or uh, um, I can send a note to Paul or we, we can figure out how to discuss the budget piece um, because I do think that would be a really helpful lever for um, ECAC to be able to do some of the work that's outlined in our charge. Okay, great. Um, do I think in terms the CPAC, the CPACE next steps, Vasu, did you include um, outreach about CPACE in your timeline? I did not. Okay. I mean, I think um, we still have to review that timeline and start vetting that information, right? I, I think what we created, I don't think we had a discussion around what are some of the things that need to be added. Um, maybe we could talk about that next next week and get some alignment with everybody. Okay. Um, that sounds good. The C pace, I think what we were what we needed to get Stephanie, and sorry, I keep forgetting to email you to to remind you about this is like what information what information we can get about those in town that would be eligible for C pace. Um, so we can get information out to them. So I think it's building owners, business owners. I think that's the main two. Yeah, we're we're aware. I mean, Sean and I had talked about this way back in the beginning when we became a CPACE community. So um, just in the list of things, we haven't been able to do much about it, but um, I can certainly circle back with him about his thoughts also, because I think he had some thoughts too. Do, yeah, let's do. Yeah, can I meet with somebody else before our next ECAC meeting to just look at the timeline, work on it together, and then we can talk about it if that's what we wanna use. Yeah, yeah, Festival, I'm happy to, maybe you and I can, can meet. If okay. That works. Right. Yeah. Um, and actually this is making me think, I don't know, Andrea, is there a way to, the event you talked about on the 15th is, it maybe this is already in the plans, but um, I know it's not just Amherst as part of the CCA, but I'm wondering if there's some preliminary information that can be shared at the start about um, cat carp and, um, you know, the goals of Massachusetts, you know, kind of our goals, Massachusetts goals, carp, like how, why we're kind of having this conversation in the first place to set the stage. Well, that's a really interesting idea. Um, I, I don't think that that would happen at this meeting. Um, it's also our annual meeting. So we're starting at six with just sort of the voting on the board and things. So it, it's a very full agenda, but we could do that um, at a subsequent meeting and, and also combined with, well, what, what are Pelham's 
goals? What are um, Northampton's goals? Where do we overlap? And um, so. yeah, I mean that could be to our discussion around like bringing someone from the state in, or, you know, things like that. I mean, maybe that would be more attractive if it was multiple communities together anyway. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so Vasu, you and I can look at the timeline and maybe we can um, we'll talk a bit more about that next time. Um, any, we're sort of flying through this agenda today, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, next item up is grant timelines. So this, I think we had talked about maybe just be helpful to understand when the grants typically come up, what ideas we might need to be generating in advance so that we're, it's not as much of a, what can we do to help you basically, Stephanie, <laughs> if anything, with the grant process? Um, I know that this was Andra's um, suggestion. So I don't know if you had some specific ideas, but um, I mean, it's like I said at the last meeting, we can certainly identify when grants are coming up and when they're due. I typically know the ones that, you know, we, um, you know, that we, there's some that are annual and we go for, there's some that are just opportunities that some suddenly arise that we pursue. Um, I think even when there is something that it seems like we should go for, we won't always just because there's only so much we can do at any given time. And I can tell you, you know, like I just recently was working on a grant for the conservation department that had the most arduous reporting requirement ever. And it took up so much time and it was for not much money. Um, so I think we're going to be a little selective. It doesn't like, I just don't want to put a whole lot of time on trying to identify all these grant opportunities when they're pretty clear when they came up, especially, you know, I'm on enough list serves that I get bombarded with opportunities. So I think, you know, if there's something that comes up and I really feel like, you know, it's an opportunity and we need help, I would certainly reach out to you all. Or if there's something that you are aware, made aware of and let me know if we can, we'll pursue it and I'll look for help. I mean, I think a great example of the collaboration was the work, you know, on the electrification effort. I feel like that was a really great process. It still is an ongoing process and it's gonna result in something pretty cool, I think. Um, so more of that kind of opportunity, I think is great. Um, again, that grant is not for a lot. It is gonna be a lot of work, but I think the end result is gonna be really important for the town. I think it's gonna be a great process. So if we could do more of that kind of thing, um, and that kind of collaboration where it's not entirely all just, you know, town getting a grant. I just, I guess, again, I just don't want to spend a lot of time on just identifying grants. I, I, they come up, we see them. If you know of them, direct them to me. So I think when I brought it up at the last meeting, I was thinking about, well, I don't know much about the Green Communities Grant Program. And you told us some at the beginning of this meeting. Um, that was helpful, but um, I guess I, I feel like I kind of need an intro. Maybe, maybe I just look it up online. But I, I you know, what Sunday, You know, what funding sources are we going to use to get through our priorities in a sensible order? Um, and we can't always know what's going to come down the line, but we could be um, looking for opportunities for something in the next two years around blank. You know, I don't have it at the top of my head. What um, kinds of things in the car that, that we're going to want to seek outside funding for, but I just feel like that, that should be a, you know, a forward thinking process rather than a reactive process. Yeah, and I think there are some things that like for me, I feel like there are some next steps that I wanna pursue and have happen like in terms of 
the building benchmarking that needs to be done. And that's very time consuming. <laughs> and um, there's also the realization that, and that, you know, and sort of getting that established first for me will help us be able to pursue some of the grant funding because unless we have that sort of in place, I feel like some of these grant opportunities, we just don't have the right information, if you know what I mean. Like there's always, you know, engineering that needs to be done. There's other information that, you know, that if we can just like attach, you know, well, here's the inventory. These are the buildings we know we need to address like immediately. That kind of information is like, I we don't, it exists on some level, like Anna's seen it, um, but it's not as comprehensive as I think I would like to see the town do. So I feel like I'd like to make something like that a priority. And as far as funding goes, um, we are in a point where we never had any funding in the past. And we now have money that's being allocated towards sustainability work, which is, and we're in a very different place than we were in the past. I mean, it's in it. It's not huge. And we all know how quickly we can utilize and eat up the funding, but it is way more exponentially more than we've had up until now. So I think there's, it's not, it's not that it's not critical. It's just that it's not, um, there, there's some money to do some work, I guess is what I'm saying. So yeah, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't be planning ahead. It's just that I feel like I want to have some time to do some work and I keep getting pushed into these projects that I feel like derail my ability to focus on some of the work that we want to get done. And I like, I really want to get this building benchmarking thing done. And I really want to get the vehicle inventory done in a way that's, um, we've worked on it to a level, but I feel like I'd like to bring in an intern to sort of get more 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 pieces of information that are relevant to this work included in that inventory, which it doesn't have right now. Um, so anyway, there's just, you know, there's some of those things I feel like need to happen and they, sometimes I feel like I'm spending a lot of times pursuing these some of these smaller grants, which can be great, but I just feel like there's other work that needs to be done and we're not getting to it. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, I guess my perspective is that we know what our priorities are. Uh, we don't need to go out and look for grants that then become our priorities. And you know what Stephanie just said, you know, it's really true. We're asking her to do a lot. She's doing a lot. And I think it'd be great if more of us were able to take the lead on projects and um, you know, do as much as we can ourselves, and Stephanie can help us here and there, but we're going to have to do a lot of the legwork on it. And some of those areas are, the, I think, the sea pace. It'd be great if one of us was to take the lead on helping develop that, um, finding partners, how to introduce building owners to sea pace. Um, that would be an excellent one. Um, other projects are figuring out ways for residents to do energy retrofits. That's a, that's a huge priority. Um, and if, the, if one of the ECAC members wanted to take charge and lead on that, that'd be great. I think so we got lots of tasks that we can do. Um, and yeah, I wonder if um, I almost like, don't wanna say this out loud, but I wonder if we should try to set up a retreat in person if we can with our new members um it feels like we have i think we have never got been able to like get together and really talk through this stuff in a way that that i feel like could be a, a bit more beneficial than our meeting time um so I don't know what people's thought. I don't want to put people on the spot and we can make it hybrid if people don't aren't comfortable, but I'm just thinking that maybe with, maybe it's a good time to, to do something like that. I mean, there's Stephanie really have you lay out like the things you want to get done and how can we support you on those? What research could would he help do? And then what projects do we, do we need to take the lead on 
I think we have these like buckets, right? What do we need the What do we need the council to focus on? And when we have a new council liaison, that's going to be helpful. What Stephanie are you focusing on, and how can we be supportive? Um, you and the town and sort of the town staff. And then where where is there nobody working on something? And that's where ECAC needs to come in and fill fill the void. Because um, I think that would really help us. You know, we know we've got the solar work coming up that some people will be involved in, but um, that's taken up a lot of bandwidth these last few months. And and but I think we're starting to see that move into a move into a process. So I feel like it's um, it just feels like the right time. I think that's a great idea, and also I think the CCA effort is really on the cusp. Um, and I feel like the very first thing that's probably going to happen is you know, a public education campaign that, and that's going to really, for that to be successful. And I know Andrew and Duane especially are very fully cognizant of that, for that to be successful, we really need to get people educated and on board because if people don't sign on, <laughs> it's not, you know, it'll be a lot of work for nothing. <laughs> so we really need to get people educated to understand why there's a benefit to this and it's not just about a better electricity price, utility price. It can be competitive. Let me, let me, but... Yeah, I, I just wanna, for, for those who may not know, um, it's not actually an opt-in, it's an opt-out. So mm -hmm. but people, people still have to wanna do it or, you right. know, and not opt out, um, but the, the, you know, it, it's happened all over the state, these, these kinds of aggregations and um, people don't tend to opt out. So, but we still want enthusiasm. Well, right. And we need, yeah, we do still need people to stay in. <laughs> so, uh, and it's important for people to understand what it's all about so that when they get the letter, it doesn't feel like there's just some, utility person sending them something that they don't fully understand, you know, so I think we just want to make it so very clear for people that this is something that this committee and the town is fully behind and why it's so important. And I think we have an incredible um, consultant when we get this going, I think we have a wonderful consultant and I think they'll be great to work with. Yeah, and that just reminds me, I think um, it would be helpful, I think, for all of us and certainly our newer members to get an update on the CCA more, more holistically. <laughs> um, and maybe what we could do instead of spending our retreat time updating on projects, maybe we can put that on our agenda for our ECAC meeting ahead of a retreat. So an update on CCA, an update on the elect building electrification, just getting everybody up to speed on some of the stuff that we have ongoing so that we can spend the retreat time really like as a working session. So I don't know what the right timeline for timing for that is, if, if it would be next meeting that we do that, or um, maybe we need to wait and see what happens on Monday if we get a liaison and we get our new members appointed on Monday. I think if I remember correctly, I think Paul mentioned the 28th was like the deadline for the council to say something about the appointees. And if they don't say anything, the appointments go through automatically, right? So we, we may have a liaison and new council members at our next meeting. Um, and then we can think, maybe Stephanie, we can send out a poll to folks about like weeks. I know the college's spring breaks are coming up and stuff. So we probably need to work around some of that, but um, about times, if people want to do a retreat, if they would be comfortable doing in person or hybrid, and like what weeks wouldn't work for them? Yeah, we can wait until our new members are on board mm -hmm. to have that conversation. Totally. Okay. Um, I think we're basically at the end of our agenda for today, then. So, in terms of next agenda items, the Sue and I will meet on the timeline and we'll come back with uh, some more information there. We may have new members and a new liaison so we can spend some time with introductions there. Um, 
we'll circulate the inventory information that Anna sent, and then we can have a discussion about that at our next meeting. Um, and I don't know, do folks want to do updates? Assuming we have new members and a liaison for next meeting, do folks want updates on CCA and building electrification next week, next time, or should we hold that for an, the following week? Can I recommend you hold it? Sure. Just because you'll have the new members and you might want to put it off till another meeting when it's not all brand new for the very first meeting. Okay, that sounds good. Um, anything else folks want to raise right now? Okay. Um, does anyone in the public want to make a comment? Okay, I don't see anything. So I think with that, we can um, call it a little early today. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody. Great Thank meeting. Bye-bye.